everybody to the Red G Fox channel. Thank you for joining us. And this is pretty much the conclusion of Grady Week. There they go. Battle Axe, Cream Pump, and the Two Brides of Frankenstein. It's been fun. It's been outstanding. We've had great polls, great trivia. Everyone's been getting it. We'll even have another trivia question up today as well. And I just want to say thank you for everyone that has clicked on the little thanks down there that's given tips. If there's anything you like about this show, about this channel, and you want to help donate to the channel, uh, and or just be appreciative, click that thanks and, and anything you give, and I will respond to any comment. I already respond to all of them anyway, so you don't even have to do that. You know I love chatting Sanford and Son with everyone in our channel and our community. So let's get right to it. Today we are breaking down Whitman Mayo, everything important about his life, Sanford and Son, our favorite, but then other things you might not know and some things maybe you do know. Comment below if there's anything missing, you want to fill in any pieces I might have forgotten, or just your favorite moments from Whitman Mayo's career, or Grady, Grady Wilson as we all know him and love him. So let's get right to it, and we will have some clips from all sorts of different things with Whitman Mayo, photos as well. So if you love Grady, this is the show for you to watch as we, like I said, finish up Grady Week on our channel here, Red G Fox. So Whitman Mayo, born November 15th, 1930. Passed away May 22nd, 2001, at the age of 70. You know, it's weird. For years, I hadn't seen him, you know, out in the social media. And we'll cover more on that uh, later on down the line, how he, people were actually even looking for him to get them on their show. But I always felt like he was in his 90s. I felt like he was here forever. Uh, but sadly, did pass away in 2001. Let's get to early stages in his life. Born in New York City. He was raised in Harlem and later raised in Queens. At the age of 17, he and his family moved to Southern California, where he went on to attend Fontana High School. So that's basically it with him. We know, it's funny, we've had several people we've covered from San Francisco that started out in New York, such as uh, Gregory Sierra, even as they joke about it as coming from Harlem in the show, as well as Whitman Mayo. I wonder if they ever ran into each other out there or had good stories about their time in New York. After he graduated high school, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, service, uh, serving from 1951 to 1953 during the Korean War. So thank you to Whitman Mayo and everyone else uh, in our community or out there who's not even a fan of our channel, might just be watching. Thank you for your service. It is de deeply appreciated by me and my whole family. Uh, family members, uh, Navy, uh, Air Force, we have all sorts of it as well. So thank you very much to Whitman Mayo uh, for his service helping out. When he was discharged, he went on to Chaffee College, then Los Angeles City College, following that with UCLA. So, man, the guy went to did some big schools and learned a lot of things. So the, he did so much in such a short time that I had no clue. I had no clue he went to UCLA, that he even served in the military. So cool facts right there about Whitman Mayo. While he was in college, Whitman began acting in small roles. You know, between parts, too, he was doing small, most likely commercials. I couldn't get any actual TV show titles. My guess is small roles, like maybe a background or doing commercial parts. Between doing filming parts, Mayo had to work several jobs to support his family. Listen to some of these jobs he did. He worked at a vineyard. He also waited tables. And that's a popular one when you see a lot of these actors in between trying to make it big, trying to make it famous, or just in between roles always uh, waiting on tape. You know what? I'm going to fix this. I like people to see Fred Sanford. Yeah, you can't even see him. He was glaring in the reflection. Anyways, <laughs> he they always would wait tables, be a waiter, a server. Whitman Mayo, no different than everyone else who had to be in Hollywood doing that. He did that. He was also a probation officer. Now, I can't imagine that. Can you imagine? Hey, yeah, you know what? My probation officer's coming over. I got to get checked up. And it turns out to be Whitman Mayo. Then you see him a few years later on Sanford and Son. And you're like, hey, Grady, I love that. Wait a minute. That's my probation officer. <laughs> that would be a trip. So he did that, was a probation officer. After some of those odd jobs, he did get on to hold a solid job before acting. He went on to be a counselor to help develop boys for seven years. So these delinquent boys, these guys who got into trouble, he was a counselor for them. So... We see Grady is a family man. He's a hardworking man with multiple jobs. He's a guy who's a jack of all trades, college, military, and now he's out there helping the youth. So all these things just feel like everyday life of people who are just getting by and doing 
the best they can. And we see a lot of good things from Whitman Mail right here, especially me being a former uh, teacher and daycare worker and working at schools for many years. Uh, love kids, and I think that's awesome that Whitman Mail uh, went on for seven years to help counsel delinquent children. So let's get, how did he get his break then after all this? How do you go from this, right, a probation officer to being one of the greatest characters and uh, side characters in a show like Sanford and Son? Norman Lear, we've talked about, we know there's negative on Norman Lear. Some people feel very negative against him, while others feel, hey, you know what? He did a lot for his community, uh, for uh, entertainment. And this is one of them. Norman Lear, while he was uh, out watching the show, he saw Whitman working at the new Lafayette Theater. Right? So he saw him putting on a play, doing the show, and he goes up to him and he offers him the role for Grady Wilson on Sanford and Son. Remember, he didn't come until season three. Grady Wilson's very first episode was one that I always forget. I never, never think about this as his first episode, but is it is the one where Lamont uh, rising Libra, right? It's where he's he feels he has to take charge, and Fred thinks he's dying, and Grady has some great lines. Let's let's show a clip from that. Same symptoms my cousin Charles had. Uh, what did he take for his last breath? <laughs> I love that one so much that he's sitting there going, he took his last breath. <laughs> it always kills me. So we know that that's his first episode and what he went on to do. Did you know, fun little fact thrown in here, his character's name, Grady Wilson, actually comes from the actor who played Lamont, Damon Wilson. His full name is Grady Damon Wilson. And so they obviously pull out the demand and Grady's name is Grady Wilson in the show. Just a little fact, a lot of us in the community have mentioned that to me in the past. So we, you know, I know a lot know it, but just in case you're new or even not a huge Sanford and Son fan, then there's a little fact for you about uh, Grady Wilson, how he got his name. He went on to become a fan favorite. He filled, and right, he did so much that people just started loving him. Where did he really take off? Because what separated from him, from Bubba and the other characters? Because Bubba was great, Grady was great, Esther was amazing. But the reason we all know why he took off on that show, and that was when Red Fox was basically having uh, issues with NBC, the producers, and he wanted more money, and he was fighting for more ownership of the show, and all sorts of different things. He went on strike, so be it, refused to come, and they popped Grady Wilson in. Uh -huh. Fred! <laughs> How's everything in St. Louis? Our Whitman Mayo in to play Grady Wilson as the lead. And they did a great job of building around him. You know, it's almost like, and I always go back to sports analogies, is your starting quarterback goes down, you bring in either a free agent, just like Joe Flacco did this last season with the Browns and how great he did, but you have great pieces around to help him shine. And I think they did that. I think with... Uh, Lamont, and then you brought in uh, great characters like uh, Esther and Woody, and then the, the family one we covered. Then you bring in Jojo Jackson and Gus for the karate one. Like each cousin Emma, um, all the different episodes had another funny new character or a, the reoccurring cast coming, and they really did rally around him. And I think that some those are some of the best episodes. As we've covered in the past, let's go over it as he went on. He went on to do Grady as a lead, Grady, uh, Lamont goes karate. That was the first one he took over. That was 7.8. That was the, the seventh best episode that year. The other ones were all legends, all Hall of Famers. And that is one of the best. Lamont goes karate. That was 7.8. Hello, Cousin Emma. Goodbye, Cousin Emma. That was 7.5. On him, the Sheikah Drexel Avenue. Every Saturday night, he had some woman chasing him. What do you do, snatch a purse? <laughs> There was like three other ones Grady did that were all 7.5. That's really good for that season. Here's the big kicker. The following season in season four, Grady still had to do a few more before Fred was officially back. One of them he did was Fred's Treasure Garden, and that was 7.8 on IMBD. That is the second highest rated episode of season four. That's how great Grady is. And you can see, let's, let's look at a clip from this one. Delicious. Ought to be a crime for a salad to be this good. In most states, it is. <laughs> Another one where where Fred's not there. They got they got Rollo, and Rollo gets some of his best lines. Well, I'll just get some little pieces of paper. I'll take them there one little by little and wrap it up in those little pieces of paper. 
<laughs> and you got Hoppy and Smitty eating the salads. I mean, oh my gosh. That episode is one of the best. It was voted number one episode of season four in the past. So we know fans are diehard um, for that episode. And it's always brought up. And I think with the success of that, that led to Whitman Mayo getting his own show entitled Grady after that character. And on it, it, it only lasted 10 episodes. That's the sad part is it did not get... And what's weird is you think fans of Sanford and Son that was drawing 14 to 15 million a week... If just half of them had showed up, you know, and then brought some new fans in, you could add eight, nine million up and it would have stayed around, but it just didn't draw. It didn't get a fan base. I think uh, that it just, when you watch it, I've, I've openly talked about this. So if you're new to our channel, uh, let me sh drop it in real quick. The reason that failed, it was bad, not bad writing, bad setup. You, you did not, you had a family environment with Grady, which would have been great. I think in the mid 80s, right? Like Webster, um, Different Strokes, those kind of shows. I think Grady would have been fine with the family household and Grady as the grandpa. But at that time in the 70s, they, you see what's number one was all in the family. Sanford and Son. Grady's type of humor did not fit that. It wasn't ready for that yet. And I think you, what they should have done, which I've said a million times, is take Bubba, who's part-time Sanford and Son, have him be full-time Grady and still make an appearance once in a while. But have him be uh, Bubba and roommates with Grady. And then you could have, or even had uh, Rollo stop by. You could have done all sorts of things because Grady lives in the same neighborhood and made it a big success because you would have taken what they loved and just transferred it over into a double show. So they failed. I think they fumbled the ball on that with it. It had nothing to do with the... Uh, Whitman Mayo. So those are some of the best episodes he did from season three and season four. You've seen the clips, how hysterical they were. So after that, he comes, after the failure of Grady, he did come back. Um, he did go back to Sanford and Son, thank goodness, and found the same success. He was a great character. Fans welcomed him back and they loved him. Unlike which, you know what, I'm going to leave that up. If you really care, ask in the comment what I was about to bring up, but I'm going to stay on topic so I'm not wasting time. So after that, in the, late in the late 1970s, he went on to do the first thing I ever saw Whitman Mayo in, and that was a kid show called That's Cat. That's Cat. I remember that. I remember the, the theme song. I remember watching it on Saturday mornings, uh, just the reruns, because I, I, when it was on, I think I was only two or three, but when, when it was going on live. But man, That's Cat was an incredible show in that he was uh, the grandpa on the show, and he was one of the main characters. So go check that out. I'll see if, if I can pull up a clip. Let me pop that in. Let's see. Oh, man, that was great. Yeah, it takes me back to my childhood. I absolutely adored that show. And it's funny, for years, I never realized when I first started getting into Sanford Son, hey, that's Whitman Mayo. That's the same guy from That's Cat. I didn't. It took me years later till I accidentally found that out. So maybe you forgot. Comment below if you remember that. So other than that's Cat in the 70s, he also went on later on, much later in the 90s, we remember Full House. He went on that where he was, DJ was going to a senior center and Whitman Mayo's character has, uh, uh, I believe, d dementia or Alzheimer, dementia possibly, and he's kind of forgetting things, but he goes out with her. Man, it's so good. Anything he's in, it brings, especially later in life, brings such a, a warm feeling. Loved that episode. He was in Keenan and Kel. And ironically, this is weird. He was in the heat of the night. Keenan and Kel, he was, I think, a, a rude or mean uncle. But in, in heat of the night, think about that. He appeared with Carol O'Connell. So how many people got to say they starred with the actors that did Archie Bunker and Fred Sanford? That's a pretty cool fact. And right in the middle is Whitman Mayo as Grady. But yeah, he got to appear in that. Now, as I was talking about the beginning of our show, in the, in the I want to say, what year was it? In the late 90s, right? Conan O'Brien came out. Late Night with Conan O'Brien was one of the first late night shows I used to watch uh, as a teenager. And in that, I remember him trying to make a big deal. He wanted to get Whitman Mayo in there and no one could find him, right? I think this is the, the before the internet really is what it is now. So he couldn't even locate him. He even went so far as to put a 1-800 number for Whitman Mayo to call in so he can get him. And he had him on the show. Let's see if we can get a clip on here. Forbid, maybe Brady had even been hurt in some way. So ladies and gentlemen, we turn to the American people to help us out. Oh, uh, Whitman Mayo. What a great, you know, one of the last things he did. I mean, he did other movies and shows, but one of the last real, like, live things he got to do, and I believe this was 96, because he passed away in 2000. 
2001, so just a few years before that. So that was one of the final things he did uh, with Conan O'Brien and uh, a, a few other minor, he did have a few other minor roles in movies, but that was it. That was it for his main part of his career. Now, the last point on him after he, he did pass away, he does have a son, Ron Mayo, R-A-H-N. Ron Mayo became a member of the Georgia House of Representatives in 2009. Man, what a, if Whitman Mayo was around, I promise you he'd be proud of his son. He's probably proud of his son either way, just like I would be if, as long as they're doing something they love. But just a fun fact, if you did not know that, his son went on to be on the House of Representatives for Georgia in 2009. So that's it on Whitman Mayo. You know, my personal opinion, he is my favorite friend on Sanford and Son. I, I think Don Bexley, doing research on all the characters for this channel, which I never did before the channel, uh, Don Bexley's my favorite. Uh, the, to see, go, you can go look at that video. Uh, we have it on our channel. Go watch all the things he did, the kind of person he was. Oh man, I had no clue everything he's done. What an amazing life and person he was. Uh, but as far as Whitman Mayo, yes, military, college, family man, son in, in, in Congress, you know, our House of Representatives. So that just shows when your kids go that far, usually you have good upbringing and everything we've seen in Whitman Mayo's life shows that he was a kind, great man. And he will always forever be Grady in our hearts. And we thank you, everything, uh, Whitman Mayo, for giving us a lifetime of laughter as Grady Wilson, uh, the best the best side character in Sanford and Son, in my opinion. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please leave your comments, give a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet and you're a Sanford and Son fan, what are you doing? Subscribe. Even if you don't like me, subscribe. There's so many things on here. You love Sanford and Son. We got shorts, you gotta laugh at those, and we also got polls and quizzes and trivia. Ugh. Go join and have a great weekend. We will talk again soon. I got a live show coming up where we are gonna do, talk about, oh, we got a whole bunch of topics. I'll save it for when we get to that point. Uh, that week I'll post what the, the three topics will be about. And then we gotta get a live show where we watch things again. Have a great weekend, be safe, and talk to you later. Peace. You want to go in there and roll over on the stomach? <laughs>